Uh, this is a little demo of the JMOL Sparsh UI system. And uh, a student of mine, Chase Leibo, is uh, here to give us a hand. Say hi, Chase. How's it going? OK. And uh, what you see on the screen right now is uh, the JMOL application. And Chase, go ahead and just sort of move it, manipulate it a little bit. You can see that it follows his finger. That's just standard mouse business. Now he's using uh, a two-finger sort of a pinch or a spread to do the zoom. That's what we've put in uh, using the sparse UI. And uh, it's, Chase, if you give it sort of a spin, just sort of pretend you're going to start it spinning. Give it a good, there you go. He can do that in any direction he wants. And it'll start spinning in that direction based on the speed that he was moving his finger. So if he moves it pretty fast, it'll spin faster. You have to give it a bit longer flick because it has to get a run of uh, signals coming out. Uh, the, the, uh, the basic uh, screen is giving out a signal about every 20 milliseconds. And we're picking that up with a driver and then uh, sending that through an internet port to a server, which is then, this is all on this machine, which is then uh, sending the messages to JMOL and uh, working that instead of the mouse. So actually, Chase, if you try to use the mouse, you see the mouse over here? See if you can manipulate it with the mouse. You'll find there's, there's not even a cursor. The mouse is completely turned off, even though it works other places on the screen. Uh, at the JMOL part, that the uh, sparse UI is completely replacing the mouse activity. Uh, Chase, why don't you pull up the uh, the water screen? Now, what I'm going to show you is um, this is JMOL in an applet, and uh, go ahead and do something with that. Okay, and you can see it's doing it. Can you, will the two finger business work on this one too? Oh, figures. No. Oh yeah, there it was. So we're still kind of, I'm still kind of working on making that smooth. But you can see now that we've still got, we've still got two finger activity over here as well. Sparse UI is interacting with both of these applets independently and uh, actually through the same server. And then we have another page that um, I think it has a protein. Is there a website one that has a protein? This one? Uh, no, that's another one. Okay, so what I'd like you to do, Chase, is go to the water molecule page and uh, close it specifically by going to File, Close Tab. Okay, and now there's another applet running in another one there. This one? Yeah, close that one too. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how you can actually use this at any site. Let's see if this is going to work. Over here on the right is a, uh, yeah, that one. This is the uh, uh, research, research Consortium for Structural Biology site, uh, PDB database. And Chase, just go through and answer OK here. And then you, you, you have to actually type the letters yes, because this is making sure you don't just automatically type OK. All right. And that enabled the uh, signed applet. And what it's actually doing is bypassing, go ahead and hit run. Uh, is bypassing the applet that's at their site. Can you make that page a little bigger? Just kind of expand it out. Not that one. <laughs> that's just that. Yeah, the big one. That one. Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Now, do we have uh, do we have sparse UI on this? This is what I'm working on today, and I'm not 100% sure I've got it working. Yeah. Okay. So Firefox has some problems if you've started it in one page and then try to go to another page. I think if you go to File, Close here again. Let's see if uh, this guy's still working. Is this guy still active? Definitely. OK. And the other thing you can do, Chase, try this. Just put your finger on the screen for a second, and then s slide it. There you go. So this is another uh, sparse UI driven action, just with one finger. Uh, let's try to open up that RCSB database one more time just to see if by any chance, uh, having closed down Firefox, we can still get it to come back again. So the idea here is that we're uh, using the applet, which is actually on our St. Olaf site, 
even though it's that database. And uh, we'll see here. This is just the standard mouse action. The way to tell if it's really working is to put your finger down and hold it, and then move it and see if it moves. OK, so we actually have sparse UI coming through on this applet now. I have a feeling what we did last time is we didn't leave it quite long enough closed between sessions uh, so that it closed out all its sockets and such. Firefox was still actually running when we started up the new page. So uh, go back to Jmall. Well, actually, uh, go back to the. Uh, why don't you Why don't you do this file close here, and then let's give it a few seconds, and we're gonna open up the f tab way up there. Yeah, let's see if we can get this. And can we get it in front of this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead and pull in uh, hemoglobin. And cartoons. Okay, and now do this with your fingers and let's see what happens. Right. Okay, so uh, basically that's the idea. And uh, we may or may not have gotten, oh yeah, okay, so that's come back with another browser. And um, the idea is to set up this display using browser pages. And I think what this teaches us is at least for now we have to. Um, probably have it all on one page, whatever we do, and then just change the text around the applet and not try to be going from one page to another. Okay, thanks Chase. You're welcome.